So the PFL Bellator deal is finally official. Uh, and I'm going to break down what this means for the PFL. What does this mean for Bellator? And what does this mean for just mixed martial arts in general? So just starting off with it, Bellator is going to be reduced to eight events a year now, which is sort of unfortunate. You know, that's less MMA now that we get. But I guess they only did 13 events this year, so it's not like they're really downsizing too much. It's only five events less. But I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this. On one hand, I'm glad that Bellator is still going to be around in some capacity. They're still going to have their own rule set with the uh, elbows, which, you know, PFL doesn't allow elbows, which does neuter the mixed martial arts aspect of the PFL. Like, what if, what if you're a Muay Thai fighter? You can't, you're, you just don't get one of your main weapons, which is elbows, which is one of my biggest gripes with the PFL, the rule set. So I'm glad at least Bellator will still be allowed to fight proper mixed martial arts rules. Like, it's just ridiculous to, like, tell people off for throwing elbows in PFL fights, especially, at the very least, the PFL need to incorporate that showcase bouts they're allowed to throw elbows. Because I can, I can understand it for tournament bouts. You know, you don't want people to get cut up and not be cleared to fight and everything. But if you're... Why, why the fuck can you not elbow and showcase bouts? What, what's, the, what's the understanding behind that? That just seems weird to me that you can't elbow in showcase bouts. But still, they're going to be doing a PFL versus Bellator champs versus champs fights, which will not have Johnny Eblen or Patchy Mix. In, and in my opinion, those two are the two best uh, Bellator champions they have. Like These are the two guys I could see being top 15 in, a, in the UFC. The fact that these two guys aren't even in, you know, it, it, like they don't even get to fight like a champion because there is no middleweight or bantamweight division in the PFL. Just, I don't know, that is a bit frustrating at the very least. Like surely he could just do Derek Brunson versus Johnny Upland. Like seriously, like you could just do that and you could do like, um, I don't know, just do like, I don't know, do... Patchy Mix is a big guy. Just do him versus like Brendan Lochran or something. I know he's not the champion technically. He did, you know, not anymore. He's lost, but still, they would be good fights. Just, I don't know, do something. Like, don't just throw these guys under the bus. Like, they're the two guys that people are most excited for. Like, to, like these are the two guys people want to see in the UFC, and they're now sort of getting fucked over here. Also makes me wonder what about like all the prelim fighters and everything the Bellator have like surely you can't just like sidetrack all of them guys like surely a bunch of people are gonna get released from their contracts because I know I I know a lot of people have a bit of a gripe fighting for the PFL like I'm sure not every Bellator fighter wanted to go over and fight in the PFL so I'm sure if people are gonna try and get out of contracts I doubt we get all the fighters that you know are champions and everything in Bellator. I know that the Don Davis said that, that that all the champions will stay, but I have a feeling like there'll be a few guys who probably try and get out of their contracts or just don't want to fight for the PFL version of Bellator at all. But this is, I don't know, this just reminds me a lot of Strike, the UFC version of Strike Force. But like, I, I don't think in two years' time, I don't think the Bellator brand of PFL is going to be around. I think this is just going to be a temporary thing. You know, get the Bellator guys like, just get them some fights and everything. Maybe eventually they'll just replace the eight Bellator cards they do with just, you know, adding eight more PFL cards and then they just get rid of Bellator. I feel like that's what will happen if I had to guess. But let me, uh, apparently, uh, the fighters, the Bellator International Series will be eight one off events. Said fighters will either fight in PFL League season or Bellator twice a year. So pretty much, these guys don't get to be active if they try and stick with the Bellator brand. But also, I don't know, it just, just sounds just really weird to me. Like, how many people are they going to have in the league seasons for, for to make up with all these new fighters? Says that... The Don Davis says they now have 260 fighters. He's a fan of 32 events in the combined company across five different franchises. You expect half of the fighters to go to the other league. All brands under PFL. He asked St Scott Coker and Mike Kogan move over to continue to run Bellator, but 
from what I'm, I've seen, uh, I think Todd Atkins, who was the one who originally talked about this deal and everything, he said that uh, he's heard that Scott Coker doesn't want to work with PFL, so it's probably it for Scott Coker with the PF, uh, with the Bellator. All 210 Bellator fighters have been brought over in the new agreement. He brought over the new employees as well. He said they sent a note this morning that all are welcome to come be a part of the new PFL company. There are 21 Bellator employees and 51 PFL employees. Shout out to uh, Tom Lawler, by the way, the the, the fighter. He's, I'm reading his notes off here, but... You know, Ariel asked about the mistakes of last UFC competitors, that they took chances on the season format, trying to make the sports fan love MMA through watching underdogs rise and favorites run. Doesn't know if Francis will fight. No, there's not nothing to do with it. Also, fantasy book the Bellaton Which one would fight? Still wants Kayla Harrison versus Cyborg. Yeah, there's a, I don't know, there's a lot to get into about this whole deal. It's very, it's obviously just because it's just been announced a couple of hours ago, there's still many details. But I, overall, I don't, I don't think this is going to turn out too great, if I'm being honest. Now, I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm hoping that this ends up being really good, but. How the fuck is Bellator making any money? I want to I want to ask that question. Where are they getting all this money from? Is the Saudis really just giving them that much money to just buy all of these companies? Like, I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand that PFL has all this money to go and buy all these fighters and all this stuff. Like, it is crazy to me. Oh, yeah, all the Bellator events are going to be, I think he said like six out of eight are going to be international. So they're going to be in other countries and everything, which is very bizarre. Uh, it is called the Bellator International Series, so I guess that makes sense then that it would be all over the world, but I don't know. It's an American promotion. Why Why do all the Bellator fighters have to go travel the world to fight? That just seems a bit random to me. Uh, maybe by international, it just means it's in Canada or Mexico or close countries, or maybe he means it's like fucking in the Middle East or something. They're also going to have separate TV deals, so Bellator and PFL are going to be on different stations or networks, whatever you want to call it. I I don't know. I feel like this is bad for MMA. I I know that sounds crazy, you know, but I I generally think this is bad. I know that, you know, PFL have bought Bellator and they're still going to do like eight events, but I just don't think this is that good overall for mixed martial arts. I was hoping that some like random rich billionaire was going to buy uh, Bellator that, you know, and keep the company going in their own image. But now we just have another like MMA company taking over and we've pretty much lost Bellator. Like this eight events a year and only f- like the main Bellator fighters are only going to get to fight twice a year or once a year. It's pretty shitty if I'm being honest. Like it is just a shit deal overall. Like I, I just don't think this is going to be the massive thing the PFL thinks it's going to be. Like yeah, Bellator, at least they're keeping the the, the rule set. But then when all the Bellator fighters want to come fight on the PFL uh, cards and everything, they, they're they not going to be allowed to elbow. They're not going to be allowed to fight mixed martial arts, you know. But yeah, I don't know. Overall, I don't, I don't like this. I'm glad that the Bellator fighters get to keep the rule set. Like I say, that they can elbow. Which, yeah, I'm, I, I could keep going on and on how I hate that you can't elbow in PFL. It, it's one of the reasons why I don't think the PFL... I know it's a small detail, but it's why you can... Like, the PFL probably won't ever be as big as the UFC because they've neutered the rule set. Like, people love one because you can say they have the superior rule set to the UFC because you can do grounded knees to opponents. It does make the events a lot better because people can't stall or anything like that. They can't try and, like, weasel their way out and... Oh, you can't knee me in the head here. In, bell- in one, you can actually knee people in the head. And that, you know, that makes people like the promotion a bit more because, they, you know, they ha- you can you can argue they have the greatest rule set. But what does PFL have besides all this fucking money to buy everybody out? Like, they, they don't really have anything too good going for them. Like, like I say, I'm, I'm hyped for the whole PFL champions versus Bellator champions, but... I know, it's just going to be like, they're all going to be like one-sided uh, squash matches, if we're being honest. All the Bellator fighters should win. 
maybe Ryan Bader loses to like one of the uh, the PFL heavyweights because they'll be actual big sized heavyweights and Ryan Bader is a bit older. But what about for the other fights? Like if a Dim Nemkov vacates his belt, maybe he goes up and beats Ryan Bader and wins the heavyweight title for Bellator. Then maybe Corey Anderson becomes the uh, light heavyweight title holder. Maybe uh, Josh Silvera or Impa Kasangane can go out there and finish him. But I don't, I don't know, man. I, I still think that would probably be really one-sided. Corey Anderson's a big guy. He's actually pretty good. He does have a chin problem, but... You know, Impa Kasangane would be so much smaller than Corey Anderson. He could probably just rag, ragdoll Impa around. Like, a lot of these PFL weight classes are just, like, guys who should be fighting at lower weight classes, fighting up weight classes. Like, most of the Toy 5 division is just, like, heavyweights, uh, light heavyweights who... No, sorry. Most of the light heavyweights are just middleweights who go up to light heavyweight because they can't fight at their own weight class because there is no middleweight division. So, you know, if th- that being the case, there is a good chance for the, like, light heavyweight. It could be, like, fucking Derek Brunson versus v- Vadim Nemkov or some massive light heavyweight who just fucking one-punch KO him. It's like, there's going to be some real one-sided fights in the Bellator champs versus the PFL champs. Like, I think Bellator's talent is, su- like, far superior to the PFL talent they have right now just in the independent PFL promotion. So, you know, this is good for the PFL. You know, it gives a bit more legit- legitimacy. You know, they, they could argue they have the best middleweight in the world in Johnny Eblen. I'm not saying that is the case, but there is an argument. Johnny Eblen is really fucking good. Like, he is just really good. And he's only going to get to fight once or twice a year, which he doesn't want. He wants to stay active. He wants to be an active fighter. So, you know, I feel like he's getting fucked over here. Patchy Mix is getting fucked over here. Like... You would think that PFL would, you know, you don't have to in- introduce a whole season, but why don't you just have two guys? Okay, listen to this concept. Why don't you have two guys from the Bell? Like, why don't you just make a random bantamweight fight between two, like, you know, guys with good records with name value, and then you do one with two guys with name value in the middleweight division? You know, why don't why don't you just make the winner of Derek Brunson versus Ray Cooper the third? Why don't you make him versus Johnny Eblen or something like that? You know, I don't. I don't understand it. Like, you have two of the hyped up guys from Bellator and they don't even get to fight like another champ. Like, I get it. There isn't any weight class to them, but that is just something I'm nitpicking a little bit here. So I'll stop nitpicking, but nitpicking, sorry. Uh, What else is there to go over? I feel like, I don't want to forget anything in this video, but I feel like there is because all these details just keep coming out. PFL, Bellator deal. I had... Wait, let's see. Mm, PFL to launch. All Bellator sign athletes will immediately be available to compete on various PFL platforms. anything else special event Johnny Ablin and Padgy Mix will not be on the PFO card there will be 32 events okay so I don't I think I've pretty much covered everything I need to have addition full face for international Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. all I have to cover there. So, do I think this is a good deal overall? Not particularly. Like, overall, I don't think this is too great for mixed martial arts, but I am optimistic that this could turn out to be good. I just have my worries that this is just going to neuter. Just It's going to neuter things a little bit, I feel like. Like, I, I guess it's good that PFL can put on more events, but I feel like they're not going to be like an overall challenge for the UFC until they put on weekly events like the UFC does. Like the UFC just puts on far and above way more events. Like there's regional promotions that are going to be putting on more events now than Bellator. And next year, the, not next year, the year after 2025, I can just see Bellator 
you know, being like four events or it just being a one-off event or something like that. I just feel like eventually they're just going to replace Bellator, but I'm optimistic. I don't think this is going to be as exciting. Uh, I'm really trying to be optimistic, but I just have a worry that it's just going to really like hamper a lot of careers that we're just not going to get to see guys fight and be active like they need to be. Like, I feel like, like, like I say, Johnny Eplin and Patchy Mix are probably going to get to fight like fucking once. They're going to get to fight once a year or something like that. And that's just not going to be good, you know, for their careers. They're on top. They're on the top of their careers right now. And they're probably not even going to get to stay active. That's something I worry about with this deal, but I'm hoping they prove me wrong. I really want this deal to work out. Obviously, I'm rooting for all the success of all MMA companies. I want MMA to stay competitive. I want there to be multiple different promotions that fighters can go to. I want to be as many events as possible. But I just have my doubts that this is going to end out well. But you know, PFL, they've, they've got a lot of talent now that they can do great events with. They've got, apparently they're doing, they're going to try and do Nugano versus Deontay Wilder in a mixed rules bout. Jake Paul's going to fight uh, the fourth quarter of next year. Like there is heaps of stuff that they've they've got planned. So hopefully it all works out for them, but I just have my doubts. But still massive deal. Don't think it, this is the massive, massive thing that people think it is. I don't think this means that uh, the UFC are going to be shaking their boots over this deal. I really don't think that is the case. You know, they, quite have, they could have quite easily went and purchased Bellator. So obviously they don't see Bellator as a threat by any means. So, yeah, I don't think this is going to be the ground-shaking deal that people maybe are acting like it is. Like, maybe it'll help PFL a little bit, but long run, I don't think this is going to be, like, game-changing for uh, the PFL, but I hope I'm wrong. I hope this does really just make them more competitive because if that comes to the case, the UFC are going to be on their A game with cards and they're going to put on bigger and better cards. But, yeah, I do have some doubts, but it's still, overall... I'm happy for all the fighters that they're getting paid more and everything like that, but we'll see how this all works out. I am excited for the champs versus the champs card, but I think it, I generally, I think it's going to be a slaughter for the Bellator fighters, but we'll find out. We'll find out what happens. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. Uh, hopefully I covered everything here. If, if I did miss something, I'll just, I'll leave it in the comments. Uh, let me know in the comments too, because I'm pretty sure I covered everything there is to cover. But if I am wrong, please do let me know, because I want this to be an informative video about this deal because I feel like everybody should know about all the details about this deal because it's, you know, like I said, it's not game changing, but it is still a big deal for Bellator fans and just mixed martial arts fans in general. But yeah, that's all I've got to say on this topic. So if you did make it this far into the video, make sure you give it a like. Uh, and yeah, let me know your thoughts on the uh, PFL Bellator deal and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If you're not already, make sure you subscribe as well because I'd appreciate that. So thank you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.